Number three is to treat each other with all purity. And this is probably the major one when it comes to dating because it's all about trying to do it in a way so that you don't uh, fornicate, right? Fornicate meaning, you know, you, you sleep together before you're married. And, you know, I would say fornication also includes, um, you know, inappropriate touching and hugging, anything that, you know, it, it, it leads towards that act, right? Because I don't think, and you know, I'll, I'll touch on this on another, in another sermon, but fornication, I don't believe, is only sex outside of marriage, right? It's, it's any, it is any type of sexual immorality. I don't think it's justified as sex outside of marriage. So, you know, when it comes to fornication, you know, because some people will say like, you know, well, we didn't penetrate, right? But we're doing all this other stuff. You're still fornicating, right? Because you're doing things that only a husband and wife should do. So if you want to do those things, just get married and then it's fine. Look at what the Bible says here. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So this verse is not teaching that men should never ever touch a girl, meaning like you can't shake hands, you can't pat a girl on the back, you know, she's drowning and it's like, no, no, I can't touch a woman. You know, you're gonna jump in and save her, right? You may, you know, you may have to like grab her to, in order to save her. So, you know, obviously in verse two, it, it, it's clear that it's talking about fornication because it says it's good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So there are certain things that you should only do to a, woman, a wife, to your wife, that you shouldn't do to any other, women, or any other woman. But, you know, we should always err on the side of caution if we can. It's just better to, you know, not do the hugging and kissing and touching if you're not married to that woman. 1 Timothy 5. And here's another verse, 1 Timothy 5, says, Rebuke not an elder. And I'm coming at this from more of a guy's point of view for now, and then I'll talk about girls in a second. It says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. So you can see the context here is it's talking about how we treat family, you know, as we should treat church as a family. And I actually don't think, you know, this doesn't mean that you can never rebuke me, right? It's, it's not saying rebuke not an elder, meaning don't re ever rebuke a bishop. It's saying, in the context, it's talking about family. It's just saying you should never rebuke a man that's older than you, but entreat him as a father. Just anybody that's older than you. Um, <clears throat> the way you should, I guess, rebuke in a sense is entreat him as a father. And the young men as brethren, the older women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. So when it comes to guys, how they should treat girls, when they're dating them is they should treat them like their sister. Do you know what I mean? So you, and you know, you might say, well, you know, me and my sister, we do hug and we do wrestle and we do things like that. I don't even think, you know, brothers and sisters should do those things because we hear about all the stories, you know, of, you know, uh, siblings like, you know, inappropriately touching each other. You know, you read about the, the, the Duggar family about things that happen like that. I think what we can learn from that is just because uh, siblings are brother and sister, doesn't mean that we then just negate how they should behave toward one another, right? Just because she's your sister doesn't mean, you know, you can just, you know, fondle her just like, you know, just, you wouldn't to somebody else. But just because she's your sister doesn't mean you can do things that are inappropriate um, to her. So we treat women as we would treat our sisters. So, you know, when it comes to men that are dating, you know, don't have this ungodly attitude of how much I can get from this girl. You know, how much of her purity I could take. That's such a wicked and ungodly attitude um, for guys to do those sorts of things. You know, you ought to treat this woman, you know, how would you want your sister treated? This is what this, this verse is teaching. Treating them as sisters with all purity. How would you want another guy treating your sister? And better yet, how would, if you had a daughter, how would you want a guy treating your daughter? Right? Would you, would you want the guy doing to your daughter what you, you are doing to that girl? You know, either, even if it's not just touching, what about emotionally leading her on? You know, stringing her along and breaking her heart? You want a guy to do that to your daughter? I wouldn't want a guy doing that to my daughter, so why would I do that to another girl? We need to treat women um, with all purity, and it's not just physical purity. I believe we should try our best to preserve their emotional purity as well. So that's a good way to think of that. You know, would, you know, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Like, would I want my daughter treated that way? Would I want my sister treated that way? If not, don't treat another lady that way. Uh, what about from a, a woman's point of view? I was going to go to Proverbs 6, but 
just for sake of time, I'll just go to Proverbs 7 only. We'll just read a couple of verses here. And this proverb really is about the strange woman. Uh, the strange woman. And we'll read a bit about her in Proverbs 7. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and behold, among the simple ones I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark of night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. So a harlot is a prostitute. Attire is clothing. So the clothing of a prostitute. And subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. And I won't read the rest, but we get a good picture of what this strange woman is like. You know, she's there lurking to try and allure the simple-minded man that is, uh, uh, you know, obviously just following his lusts, which most of us do. You know, she dresses in a certain way and she behaves a certain way. And we read that in Proverbs 7. So just like a man should treat his, his, the girls with all purity, Women have a part to play too, right? Women have a part to play, meaning, you know, you, you are not acting like this strange woman. You're not dressing like this strange woman in order to preserve the purity of the guy that you're dating, right? So there, there, are, there are two parts to play. And it's always like this, you know, when, when you hear about domestic, you know, you hear about, you know, rape cases and things like that. And every, everyone starts to jump on either side of the fence, right? And say, oh, you know, the guys, you know, you, you have those, uh, uh, who are those activist ladies that walk around naked and they're still saying, yeah, it's still not permission for you to rape me, <laughs> right? And, and then you've got the men saying, oh, you know, well, if you would just put on some clothes, a guy wouldn't rape you. And I remember reading uh, on Facebook recently this quote from uh, uh, the... Uh, the imam from, from a Lakemba, Lakemba mosque saying, you know, when you put meat out on the counter uncovered, the flies are going to come eat it, you know, so that's why you've got to cover the meat and put on the, the, the niqab or whatever. <laughs> you know, so he's got the other side of the coin where it's like, it's the woman's fault. But then the right perspective is it's both their fault. You know, like they won't let you have that position where, you, you know, you play the devil's advocate, you say, oh, it's man's fault or it's woman's fault. No, it's both their fault. Because if a woman wasn't in the wrong place, wasn't dressed the wrong way, yes, she wouldn't have got raped. And that, but that doesn't excuse the guy, because the guy should be treating the girl with all purity. Right? A sister is with all purity. So they are, they're both wrong um, in, in most cases, I think. But yeah, obviously in some cases it's just a man just you know, raping a woman. Or um, um, I'd say the man obviously is, is in more of the wrong. <coughs> uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so, pro, pro, so Proverbs 7, we read about the strange woman. And, you know, at one point I just wanted to bring up here is, you know, when it comes to ladies' social media profile and photos that you put on the internet, when a man looks at those photos, will he get this picture? Do you know what I mean? Like when a man looks at your profile picture and he looks at the pictures that you put on Facebook and you post on Facebook for all the world to see, is he thinking of this? Is he thinking of the strange woman that has the attire of an harlot? Do you know what I mean? So you got to think about how, what, how do I, what's my testimony? How, how am I showing myself to the world? And if you have pictures like that on Facebook, I think you should change them, you know, or remove them. Um, don't keep them up there. You know, what would a man think when he looks at your social media profile? Does he think of Proverbs 7? You know, this is why I believe young women, this is why they need input from a father. Right, because your best buddies, your best boy buddies, they're not going to tell you that take that photo down. They're going to like the photo. They're going to share the photo because they don't care about your purity. You know, they they're, they're liking and subscribing to your feed because you're putting pornography on their feed. Do you know what I mean? So you know, the, girls girls put these photos up on Facebook and they're like, oh look, I get all the likes and I get all the shares. Yes, because they because you're putting inappropriate photos of yourself up there. It reminds me of those YouTube channels where they have like 2 million or 3 million subscribers and you're like, well, you know, what's this channel about? Oh, it's, it's a lady teaching people how to breastfeed. You know, no wonder she's got like 3 million followers or, you know, a lady where she's obviously inappropriately dressed and you just think, you know, are they really subscribing to your channel because of what you have to say? Or are they subscribing to your channel because of how you present yourself? So think about how you present yourself and it's the same with dating, right? You think about how you present yourself so that uh, you protect the purity of the guy um, that you are dating. <coughs>
Ezekiel 16. Let me show you this verse. <coughs> Ezekiel 16, God is using the analogy of uh, an imperious, whorish woman um, to, to, to describe the nation uh, of Israel and Judah. But look at verse 30. It says, How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, all this fornication that he's been talking about in this chapter, the work of an imperious, whorish woman, in that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest high. So he's saying like, you know, you're, you're, a prostitute at least gets paid, but he's saying here, you're not like a prostitute because you don't even want to get paid. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. So a prostitute is somebody that obviously sleeps with a man for money. But I would submit to you today, how is, how is that different? I mean, obviously it's not exactly the same. But is it much different if a guy's going to wine and dine you and then you sleep with him? Do you know what I mean? Are you not just a different type of prostitute? I mean, he's going to buy you a gift and therefore you're going to sleep with him? He's going to take you out for dinner and therefore you sleep with him? I mean, the, the, the prostitute is just smarter because she's taking the cash. You know, like the Bible saying, she's got the cash, she can buy whatever she wants. Whereas you have to take whatever the guy offers you, right? So, you know, get that perspective. In, you know, is it any different if, if you're willing to sleep with a guy just because he takes you out a couple of times and treats you nicely, I mean, isn't that what a prostitute is doing? She's just getting something and then giving him something as opposed to committing to one another and then having that physical relationship together. Uh, <clears throat> All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Now, when it comes to treating each other with all purity, I think it's a good principle is to always err on the side of caution because it is a gray line, right? It's like, you know, not touching a woman. Where, where's that line? You know, I know uh, I heard before, you know, if you wouldn't do it with a man, don't do it with a woman. That's, that, that's, a, good, that's a good measure, I'd say. Um, but these are gray lines. Like, these are not commandments because it doesn't say that in the Bible, right? It just says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. It says it's better to not touch a woman. Where you draw that line, it takes a bit of wisdom doesn't it? It takes a bit of self-control. So I think when it comes to trying to determine that line, like in everything in life, you know, when we talk about modesty even, you know, how modest is modest? Well, you shouldn't be having the frame of mind of how immodest can I get before I'm not modest anymore? It should be how modest can I be? It's the same with purity. We should err on the side of caution. How pure can I keep this relationship? Um, what should I do in order to keep it as pure as possible? So we ought to err on the side of caution. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So let's be wise about how we can fall. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.15 says here in verse 18, it says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So this doesn't just say don't commit fornication, it says flee from it. Because it's not how close should I get to the line before I tempt myself. It's let's get as far away from the line as possible so that temptation is not even in the question, uh, not even in the picture. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes uh, 3. Uh, five. Just breeze through a couple of these verses. It says here in verse 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So I think that's a good principle for dating. There's a, there is a time to embrace, that's once you're married. And there's a time to refrain from embracing, and that's when you are dating and when you're still single. So, you know, my recommendation there is, you know, err on the side of caution, um, you know, and get married sooner because, you know, long relationships, long engagements are dangerous because there's a higher temptation to fornicate and to do things that are not, uh, not appropriate. So get married sooner. 